In today's video, how to get shredded six pack abs if you're a woman and what are the consequences? What's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com and in today's video we are going to address the topic of how to get shredded six-pack abs if you're a woman. We're going to talk about why and how, some of the differences between men and women, and perhaps some of the consequences if you love this type of information around nutrition, training, and an evidence-based approach to reaching your fitness goals, hit subscribe. It's what I love to do here. And today's video topic, well, it was brought up to me by someone who's writing an article and I wanted to help her out and kind of address my thoughts on this topic. Now, although I'm a coach who gets a lot of inquiries and I work with a lot of females, I've never actually had a female reach out to me and say, my goal is to have six pack abs. I've had many men reach out to me with this goal of having six pack abs. So I think right off the bat, there is a little bit of a difference between men and women on what having a six pack represents. I think most of us would think for a guy who has six pack abs, that represents someone who is really paying attention to the nutrition, their training, they have an athletic build, right? But for women, I think if we think of a woman, kind of a six pack look, most of us would think like, ooh, that's probably a little bit over dieted, a little bit too lean. And you're not completely wrong there. Okay, so let's first talk about the body fat percentage we need to obtain for women to get a visible six pack. Now, for women to get kind of on the leaner side of the sport, you know, 15 to 17% body fat for a female is considered lean. That's considered about where men are at like 10%, right? And that's about where men start to see their abs, you know, for the most part. There's always gonna be some variation. But I've dieted women down who have gotten down to an under 10% body fat. Now this is extremely shredded and they certainly had clearly visible abs and I'll probably be including some clips in here uh, of some of my clients that have had you know, nice abdominals. But the purpose of getting those abdominals was not to have a visible six pack. It wasn't something that they said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. In fact, in the division that I most commonly coach, bikini, they don't actually judge the abs. It's just a byproduct of getting low body fat. So it's not something that we tend to focus on. And I will say this, women tend to hold typically more body fat in their lower bodies. So oftentimes I'll see women get very lean in their upper bodies, their lower backs, their, their jawline, their shoulders will come very lean, even a six pack before they start to see their lower bodies lean out even very much at all. They'll still probably have a bit of a soft lower body in some cases, but they'll have visible abs. And I think this will often scare some people away from continuing to diet down um, until they lose the fat in their lower bodies because that's where women tend to want to get leaner. You know, the more common complaint I get is I really want to lean out my thighs, my hips, my glutes, those kind of areas. And especially when you're competing, this is certainly going to be the case. So the big difference between men and women right off the bat is that they typically hold their body fat a little bit differently. But even in women that are a little bit more balanced in their body fat, they're still going to have to get shredded to see their abs. Now some women, just like men, are going to have to get leaner. Now one of my good friends, Diana Dahlgren, you know, she's often complained to me that she always has her abs showing. And while this might seem like something positive, it was difficult for her when she started competing in the bikini division years ago because they did not want to see really hard abs and she would get them early in the dieting process. But for most women, it's going to be a difficult process to get them in. So let's talk a little bit about how we should train to get abs for women. The divisions that I coach for competition really require a nice tight core. So I typically prescribe two days a week of direct abdominal training. Now, as we all know, stabilization in our core occurs anytime we're upright and we're holding something. So you're going to get activation of the stabilizing muscles in the core almost on a daily basis, especially if you're going in the gym and lifting weights and holding things, right? So how often should we train them for resistance? Honestly, two, maybe three days a week at most. I do find that the leaner you get, it becomes a little bit more fun to train them. You can actually visibly see them moving and working. Um, I love doing three different positions for the core. I love to do a decline variation of a sit-up. I love to do a hanging variation of a leg raise. And I also love doing a cable machine pull down. Those are my three go-to moves to really build a nice tight core. And depending on the competitor or the female, we are gonna focus on perhaps doing more or doing less based on what their physique is looking like. Well, let's talk a little bit about the nutrition when it comes to dieting down to see your abdominal muscles and getting shredded. 
Really the biggest thing here is that we just need to be in a caloric deficit for a long enough time to allow body fat to come off. A lot of people will diet down and lose a significant amount of weight and then they'll say, you know what, my next goal is to get some shredded abs. It's my next goal to see my six pack. But sometimes that second goal can be much harder than the initial, okay? When you get below, for women, let's say 15 to 17% body fat, this is when we're gonna start to have some hormonal issues. And this is where something called amenorrhea can start to happen. Now, technically, that is defined by missing three cycles in a row. So three menstrual cycles in a row are missed. That is technically considered amenorrhea. Now, now this is not something that's only seen in competitors or women that get six pack abs. I grew up playing sports and I remember many of the women that I played sports with in college never had a menstrual cycle. Many of the runners, uh, the volleyball players, because they were constantly training so hard and they kept such low body fat just from their sport. But just like being too lean can cause amenorrhea, so can obesity, okay? So this is a indication that our bodies are just a bit out of balance. Now for female athletes that are concerned primarily with reproduction, I will say that perhaps we don't want to stay lean too long. Many times you'll hear people say that abs are made in the kitchen and while it is very, very true that a diet that is based around sound nutrition is going to be required to reveal your abs, to get your body fat off, you certainly need to make sure that if you want to see them that they are pronounced enough and doing some resistance training is going to accomplish that. Many of the people that you see in you know, Instagram or on social media or perhaps even playing sports, I mean, I look at some of the CrossFit athletes and they look so amazing and they obviously have amazing six packs and cores and shredded abs and all these things, but those athletes have that look as a result of their training, okay? So not many of those people are looking to get abs specifically for that purpose. It's just a result of their training. And I think this can teach us a lesson. We need to have an athletic approach to our training and our nutrition if we want to look like the athletes that represent what is a good look for us. Likewise, once you diet down to that body fat and you see the look that you're going to see, there is a strategy that I like to use that allows people to remain leaner and possibly prevent some, some long-term health issues by using a strategy called taking a diet break. Because as you get leaner, stress becomes more impactful, okay? When you are really lean, cortisol can end up being chronically high. Leptin can end up being chronically low. And so you run into these issues with hormones that can have some long-term negative effects. And using a diet break, which is a strategy, I've done many videos on this topic, where we bring calories up to maintenance, reduce cardio, kind of recover from training. It might be a good idea to do a deload. Okay, so we take away some of the impact that our training has. We focus more on recovery and getting a few extra calories based at maintenance. And I've seen many women actually start a menstrual cycle just because we took a diet break, okay? So I've seen the ability to stay leaner longer benefited through the use of nutritional and cardio and training adjustments during that time. Because what often happens is we crash diet down, get the look we want, then we put all the body fat back on rapidly, and then we wonder how we could have handled it differently. So this is basically a hack for that. And the way I use it with my clients is through competition schedules where we have multiple shows, we diet down, and I like to use diet breaks prior to stage, but once you're in stage shape, you can actually bring calories up, drop cardio down, and maintain your weight a lot easier. Now. It's always going to be up to the individual on how lean you want to stay, how your health is looking, you know, working with a doctor, looking at your hormone levels, and taking into consideration your long-term goals for reproduction, having a family, these, sign, these things are going to be very important for each individual to look at. But women are so uniquely different. I have some women that get under 10% body fat, never lose their menstrual cycle, all right? Likewise, I have some women that are 20% body fat, 25% body fat. We start a diet they lose their menstrual cycle, okay? It's not simply just about body fat. There's so much more that goes into play here. So the real thing we need to do is figure it out for ourselves. Our bodies are going to tell us what to do, but you'll never really know unless you push yourself and you go there. So if it's something you've been thinking about doing, you've wanted to diet down and see, well, I'll tell you, as I say in many of my videos, you have to have a well-defined goal to get there. Very few people actually obtain six-pack abs when the goal is just to get six pack abs because they look nice. Usually it's going to be a, a goal such as a photo shoot, maybe a fitness based photo shoot with a photographer that you respect and you know like I gotta show up ready for that. 
you know, maybe something as important as like a vacation or a reunion where you just want to look great when you go out to the pool. Very often, you know, the bodybuilding stage is going to do that. Or if you compete in a sport that really just requires you to work your ass off and you have to pay attention to your nutrition, well, then it can happen that way as well. You know, just look at the amazing physiques on these CrossFitters. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. If you have any other questions, put them in the comments below. I'd love to answer them and I'll talk to you tomorrow.